Welcome to our next Top Tips session as part of Touring and Adventure Month. Today we're going to be hearing from two experts in the sector giving their top tips on affordable marketing. So let's meet our experts today. First, I've got Janet Parton, Sales and Marketing Director at Cosmos and Globus. Hi, Janet. Hi, everyone. And then Ant Stone, Director of Marketing at G Adventures. Hi, Ant. So let's start by looking at some top tips that agents can use to attract some new touring and adventure customers, maybe customers that don't even book with that agency yet. Um, Janet, let's start with you. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you're having a good conference so far. Um, thanks for having me, Claire. I think top tips for, for agents who may not have a touring database. Um, one of the, the, the basics is almost just to sort of say to customers that are either coming in or on the phone, have you thought about a tour? Um, you know, if you think back quite a long time ago when cruising was still a, a niche product, that's how we grew, the, or that's how the cruise industry grew. So just putting it into people's mindset and actually proposing it to them is a really quick, cheap, well, free way of, of, of getting that, um, that plug-in for touring. Um, and then from then, that's when you can really start to drill into the, the reasons why somebody should take a tour. So the inclusions and break it down to a per day price, the taking the hassle away, taking the stress away of, of, of tailor making a, a journey, the cost comes in. Um, you know, if you do a tour, it's on average about 30% cheaper than trying to package it all together with different components. Um, and, you know, let the experts do the complex logistics. That's what we're there for. So I think that's a really easy way to start introducing touring to people that maybe don't have a touring database to, to begin with. Right. And, and, and would that be any different for adventure? No, I think absolutely. The database is, is definitely a great starting point. I'd echo that from Janet. I, and also, I just think about um, the less strategic ways to just attract a new audience, either onto, onto the phones or into your stores or onto your websites, etc. And I think one of the best ways to reach uh, new customers is through your existing ones. So just encouraging them to uh, spread the good word about the services that you're offering and the products that you're selling. Word of mouth, um, no matter what we go on to say about today, word of mouth remains the most effective tool in marketing um, and if you can get that machine up and running um, you'll be in a great place and I'm sure you're already offering a great service um, which is definitely something that people talk about and are really um, keen to but also capture that you know looking at reviews or testimonials and using that to your benefit so you can attract those new customers in because they're looking uh, for great product great services and a trusted uh, travel agent right now so I think uh, existing going through your existing customers to find new customers is a great start point. Okay and and you mentioned existing customers there but is it is it um is it different uh, what sort of marketing that you would use um, to speak to your your existing database maybe they've booked a mainstream holiday with you or a cruise or something like that and um, you're trying to to promote touring and adventure so would you talk to them in a different way um, Ant? Um, well yes you would speak to them in a different way because if you want to change your habit then you need to be giving them more information and more choice um, and first thing, when you were looking at adventure touring, such as G Adventures provides, I think the most important thing versus traditional holidays is by making it attainable, making sure that it doesn't seem such an extreme end to the scale that um, it's very unlikely that people are going to go there. So making it attainable. We do a lot of work at G Adventures around promoting adventure, but a large part of that is actually busting the myth that this means climbing mountains or trekking through the wilderness. Um, so it's just a really small change about how they can um, take a fantastic holiday, um, but include some of those adventure aspects to it. And you can still relax, which is really important. So I think um, selling uh, to adventure touring to an existing customer base is just about dialing down that kind of um, extremity of change, I think is really important. And uh, if you want to do that, I think one of the best ways to do that is to speak to your customers as well. You know, you're looking at your data uh, for sure, but looking at things like surveys or polls, a really great way to understand um, objections from current customers about why they might not do it. And then um, it, we're always happy to help on how we can overcome some of those objections in that, in that uh, process as well. So we see a fantastic repeat rate. So we know the hardest bit is getting them on to that adventure tour. Um, and then the easy bit is getting get them onto the second, third and fourth. Okay, great. Um, and, and Janet, is it is it different for touring or is it exactly the same? 
Uh, yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what Ant says. I, th I think it's, you know, once you've got that customer, you've hopefully got them for life and, and they will go on and do other tours subsequently after that and, and with a range of tour operators. I think, you know, getting somebody on the tour in the first place is, is probably the harder point. So it is about just talking to every customer that comes in and seeing if it's an option for them, if it's something they would like to explore. So as travel agents, you then just need to be prepared to overcome some objections and misconceptions so that you can talk um, you know, confidently about what the touring product is. But I think there's there's some other sort of top tips that, that that travel agents can do, which is relatively low cost, which is which is relevant to whether it's a new customer or an existing customer. So, you know, I think focus on on groups, make it relevant. So look at look at the products that touring companies offer and see if you've got certain groups in your local towns and cities. So, for example, you might have music groups or music clubs around and, you know, have a look at which companies do music tours. So, you know, we've got a, a Memphis and a Nashville tour. That's great for groups. So you've got to, you've got something which would spark someone's interest yeah. already. You've got that hook so you can, you know, go out there and send an email or, you know, put a poster up in, in a local community hall, wherever these groups take place. It doesn't have to be expensive or, or fancy. Um, we recently did a, a church group for through, but for a travel agent and it was 40 passengers to Israel and it was um you know one of our holy land tours and, and they, they they contacted their local church group so mm. you know that there's lots of ways that I think travel agents could go out there and, and try and find business yeah. find new business which doesn't have to be you know expensive it's just about finding a niche and finding a hook which which might resonate with people and so that that travel agent actually went and looked for that rather than waiting for the church group to come which is really important it, yeah. I think um gone are the days where we can all sit 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 down and kind of wait for people to come to us it it's really important in your local area that you're you're making that effort to go to people and and make sure that they're aware that you don't just book a, a bucket and spade holiday that people walk in the door or, or call for you yeah, can book absolutely and you know and don't get me wrong I'm sure everybody loves those customers that walk in and say I'd like to book this please that's great take it bank it you know and 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 you know that's great business but I think there is there's a big opportunity out there to broaden the the, the touring um, market. There's lots of people out there that would love to take a tour. It's just about you know branching that and putting that out towards them, and um, you know it's just having the confidence to talk about it. But actually, from a commercial benefit for travel agents, it's a great product to sell. You know that the average selling price is is high. You know two two and a half thousand pounds higher for some suppliers. That's per person you know, good commission levels, good repeat business, good support. It's, you know, it is a bit of a no-brainer. I'm a bit biased, aren't I? But it is a bit of a no-brainer to try and sell. On this, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, I think, Janet, you just touched on it really briefly there, but low-cost options. But um, when a, when an agent starts to think about marketing, there's um, there's a, a something that kind of goes through even my head that kind of thinks – um, it's e it's very easy to assume that marketing is going to cost you an absolute fortune. You need some glamorous agency to help with it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But obviously that's not true. So, um, and what's what's your best tips for low or even no marketing uh, budgets to still attract this great audience? Yeah, great question, Claire. I think, um, that, and I've you know I've said this to my own team today. I think the first step on that on that journey is take a step backwards and have a look at your uh, at the fundamentals of marketing. I think um, you know product. Are you offering the right product that suits your customer base? Do you understand what you're offering? Um, if not, connect with that operator or do some training or find out exactly what you understand. Product first of the four P's. Any marketer will tell you that place so that's talking about point of sale we're specifically talking about your website your retail store your social media are they aligned are they fit um are they open to inbound inquiries the third one of those four p's is price what value are you offering um to those customers over and above those competitors um and are you accessing the latest deals and promos because if you're not your competitor probably is so making sure that you've got that pipeline right the way through for price and then talking about promotion the fourth of the four p's promotion how are you promoting that product? Are you giving clear benefits to the customer? Are you consistent? Are you clear? Are you compelling in the way that you're promoting that across all of your channels? But I think the fundamental first point after understanding all four quarters of the four Ps is actually something Janet said already in the first question, which is around that database. I'm very wary of 
um, marketing of small businesses that really build their community on Facebook or on Instagram, um, some on LinkedIn, for example, or WhatsApp. These are third party platforms that they can just change in an instant and really take that community alongside with them or, or make you pay for that access to that. So building a first party database of, of, of quality, high quality, usable email contacts will serve you really well in the long term, especially if you're serving that database with compelling content through email newsletters, CRM programs um, and, and uh, deals, whatever they're signing up for. So I think uh, database would be the first point of call I would advocate. And I think... Um compelling content is a great point there because it, I think um, it's it's almost a little bit dangerous to think particularly on social media kind of pump out those really low price offers and maybe not show yourself uh, uh, your a good breadth of product because you're constantly pushing out just offers so I think that um that that, that compelling content and just not showing offers all the time is really important if, uh, but I could I'm not a marketing expert so I could be wrong so is, is that the case or yeah, you'll hear that said in all marketing departments, it's the biggest um, discussion point is like low, dialing down the volume on discounting and dialing up the volume on brand building and equity. And for a small business, you know, when they're selling the similar products to the, the adjoining street or the next town over, when it comes to your yeah, product differentiation, absolutely, but also the story of that store, that, that seller, that agent, and the expertise really needs to come through there because that is the USP, the point of differentiation, most commonly when we're talking to travel agents. Um, it's their ability to sell um, adventure tourism with confidence, and that sometimes comes with experience through training or firsthand experience of being on, having been on one of the tours. So absolutely, I'd agree with that. And, and Janet, what's your top uh, low cost tip for marketing? Um, I've got a couple. I think, you know, first and foremost is utilize the, the tour and adventure suppliers out there. So, you know, I'm sure we've all got rafts of tools which are accessible to travel agents for you to use. So whether that be window card templates or, um, you know, email templates, um, training, you know, there's lots of different tools that we have at our disposal, which we have ready for travel agents. So that's the first thing. Um, I mean, I know you just made a point, Ant, about social media and actually building, you know, sort of a hard copy database. I agree with that. But social does have its place. And I think, you know, that it is working really well at the moment for, for cheap or low cost activity. Um, you know, I know our Cosmos travel agent page is we, we post offers on there and, and then they're shared by travel agents. And we've got just loads of testimonials where travel agents have said thanks for this I've had a booking resulted in, in posting that offer you know just time and time again and I know that the ATAS Facebook page you know suppliers can post those same offers onto the ATAS page so you can take those copy it put it onto yours maybe use it as a lead generation so if you can then get the um get the the, uh, the customer's email address and name so you can put that into your own database then so you can then use it going forward that that would all help but they're, they're really simple tools at the moment, which are easily accessible and, and I think would be um, a quick win for lots of businesses. Perfect. The other thing, sorry, Claire, the other thing just on, on that is, you know, I'm talking certainly from Cosmos perspective here, but I'm sure I'm talking from, from other tour and suppliers as well, is utilise suppliers for joint marketing campaigns. You know, so if budgets are tight, you know, they're tight all over. You know, we're going through a, a you know, a... a a global pandemic so so none of us have got cash to burn but we have got money to to work with with partners in in talking to databases and and you know bringing in new customers so you know speak to suppliers because we've just done a big exercise at the moment of of doing a, a joint mailer with lots of different travel agents where it's been over branded by the by the travel agents um call to action and logo we've taken out anything to do with our call to action the travel agents can then mail that through We've paid for the postage, we've paid for the printing. So it's just a way that, that travel agents can still still do some marketing out there without having to actually lay out the cost themselves. Great. Um, I think like, well, while we're talking about all the, everything that a, an operator can add, um, ATAS this month as part of our touring and adventure um, month, we launched a brand new agent toolkit for our members. So uh, it's packed with social media images, email banners, uh, written content for you to talk to your customers about. Um, so, uh, Janet, you've briefly mentioned yours, but Anne, are there any other uh, tools that you've got that you offer the agents that they can make use of? 
Yeah, we've got a fantastic environment for agents. Um, if they visit geoventures.com slash agents, they'll find access in there to Sherpa, which is our online agent booking system. Um, and within that, we've got the agent backpack, which is a fantastic go-to tool for all Geoventures information, news, updates, webinars, selling tools, tips and tricks. So much in there. Um, it's a fantastic launch throughout the pandemic um, that we put that into. Um, and we've also... Um, we've also got an agent Facebook group as well. Um, so just going against what I've just said about building the community on there, but we do have the Agents of Change Facebook group, um, which is a fantastic um, community for people just to find um, tidbits of information, promotions and tools that we can put through there. And secondly, I'd say a couple more kind of left field ideas. Our blog, around 80% of the content on the Geoventures blog is available to republish. Um, on your own blogs um, for free just check with us because there are some on there that we just need to vet um, but absolutely great content on there and then thirdly the other place to learn more about adventure um, our very own Brian Young MD of G Adventures hosts the Adventure Hour every uh, Saturday morning at 10 a.m on travel radio so it's an, another great spot to learn more about the world of adventure touring. Fab. And, and and obviously all of our other ATAS members have loads of agent tools as well. So so check them all out with all of our partners. Um, much as I don't like to mention it a lot, but uh, hopefully we're coming out of the other side of the pandemic and um, with every part of my body crossed. Um, and um, obviously messages during during that time have kind of changed a little bit. How we talk to our customers have changed a little bit. So as we come out of it, um, what messages should the agents really be focusing on when it comes to talking about uh, touring and adventure holidays? Um, uh, and let's start with you on this one. Yeah, so it, you're absolutely right. We are changing, but we've reinforced, I think, a lot of the, what we've been talking about as an industry for a long time. And trust, flexibility and confidence are three of the absolute table stakes. They're not a competitive advantage. They're expected from customers uh, coming into all points of sale now. Uh, trust in your company and your product, confidence um, to get back out there and that they'll be okay. But on top of that, I think obviously at Geoventures, we're a highly responsible um, company. So I'd say you know, around being conscious, our term that we've coined um, in the last six months has been around re-travel. So this is about looking around, seeing the impact that has happened in your own local community, uh, both on the high street and in family and friends and networks and in society as a general, but be open to understanding of that, how the impacts happen in the places that you visit and know that, you know, by traveling with G and other responsible companies that you're helping to support many of those uh, communities get back on their feet, but also, um, you know, look and think beyond the pandemic. It has, you know, had a seismic impact on the industry. It's had a seismic impact on the, the way that we market our products, operators, agencies, etc. But look beyond that, think long term. And I think, uh, I think you'll see those customers coming back in with smiling faces. Yeah, great point on the uh, coming back better. I think um, I'm sure I, I can see that all ATS members are all looking at that. Um, Janet, what about you? I think Ant summed that up perfectly well, really. I think trust and confidence is, is key. Safety is key. And you know, I think travel agents can be rest assured that, you know, the tour and adventure suppliers that are under the ATAS umbrella have, have got that all ticked off. You know, flexibility, we know, is a is a real requirement for, for customers booking at the moment. I think just understanding um, tour operators booking um, policies is important, but I think we all offer flexible cancellations, movements, etc. So, but, I mean, the other thing about a tour and holiday is that, you know, you are handheld, if you like, from start to finish. You know, so you have got that added confidence that somebody is on that tour with you the whole way. So should anything go awry, then then there's somebody there that's going to sort it out. And that's not just in a global pandemic. That's just in general about a tour. So, you know, people can, can rest assured that they're in, they're in, you know, they're in safe hands. Fantastic. Well, I think that is all we've got time for today, but um, loads of really good tips on how to how to promote your business and particularly touring and adventure holidays. So a massive thank you to everyone that's watched today and a big thank you to my experts, Janet and Ant. Thanks very much. And see you again for another top tip session. Bye. Bye. Bye.